In season one, we found Australia's first master chef. In season two, Adam took the title. I love it. Now, are you guys ready to see this? Yes. Yeah. A new season begins. Thousands auditioned around the country. I'm going to win this. 50 were chosen. Yes, yes, yes. But only one can be the best of the best. How those arms? Are they hurting yet? Blood, sweat and tears. You're on that highway to Trouble Town. Quick, the sauce. To win this competition, you need to have humility, the ability to learn, and that willingness to go out on a limb. It's absolutely gorgeous. Great food is deeply satisfying. It's emotional. That's delicious. And it begs you to go in for another spoonful. You need to take it away now, because I want more. What makes a great dish is execution. Without that, you won't go far in this competition. Seriously, I never thought it was going to be this hard. Which would just be so sad to go home now. Come on. Look, well, John, I, can I just say, I don't think anyone has ever done this. Tonight, the race is on for a place in the top 24. I can see a little panic on everybody's faces. Oh, my God. What am I going to do? I'm loving the energy in here. And in the weeks ahead... 500 little nippers will be here to eat your food. The chosen few will face the toughest challenges ever. They're coming! It's over 1,300 meals. Come face to face with some of the world's top chefs. You're a very nice man, Heston, but I think you're slightly evil. Find themselves cooking in amazing locations. It doesn't get much better than this. And after months of intense competition... This is not the time for complacency. It's going to be incredible. This is the time for brilliance. One is destined to be Australia's next master chef. I can't believe that it's the first day of MasterChef. What an experience. It, it's just... Whew. Being in the top 50 for Australia is an amazing feeling. I've never been in the top 50 of anything before. Standing on a boat, looking around at all these other 49 competitors, wondering, what can you cook? I'm here to change my life, and I'm going to throw absolutely everything that I've got at it. And I will not be satisfied till I am the next Master Chef. We're approaching an island, and I recognise it as Cockatoo Island. This was the centre of industry for Sydney. It's been all about hard work. So I'm thinking we're up for some hard work ourselves. So we walk through the arches, and there's Gary, George, and Matt. And it, all of a sudden, it all comes home. We are here to cook. It's game on. The sheer terror that I'm feeling right now is so overwhelming. This is pressure at its highest. Welcome to Cockatoo Island. And more importantly, welcome to the top 50 of MasterChef Australia 2011. <laughs> George and I spotted some talent this year on our tour of this country. We picked you because we saw some beautiful food. But what we saw most of all were individuals with some get up and go. A real desire to change their life. This is what MasterChef's all about. There are three things that you must remember. Determination self-belief and cooking that takes our breath away every single time. Show us those qualities this week and you'll find yourself wearing one of these. A MasterChef apron and there are just 24 of these 
up for grabs. That's like the holy grail. I want one of those aprons. Earn one of these and you'll enter the beautiful MasterChef kitchen in the top 24. That's where we'll find Australia's MasterChef for 2011. Good luck. Right, let's get down to business. Standing between you and the top 24 are some very serious challenges. They will test your limits, and more than ever before, they will be big, starting with this one. Can you hear it? I can hear a chopper. I don't know which direction it's coming from. But as I look up, I can see it flying from behind the old industrial buildings. As the helicopter's coming around, oh my God, there's this big box that's got a big M on it and you think to yourself, that's for us. That's for us. Your eyes aren't playing tricks. That really is the mother of all mystery boxes. <laughs> I'm like, what are they doing? I know they're saying bigger, badder and better than ever, but this is ridiculous. I have no idea what's in this giant box. Someone thought it might have been Donna Hay. Is there like a live cow or something that we have to milk? The main thing I'm worried about is an oven. There's going to be an oven in there with a mixer on the top and cupcake tins. In that mystery box are some of the highest selling ingredients from Australian supermarkets. When the eternal question, what's for dinner, is asked around Australia, this is what's in the fridge. We have potatoes, onions, lemons, lettuce, mint, peas, mushrooms, tomatoes, beef mints, and bacon. Your job is to take these everyday ingredients and create something that is extraordinary. Most of these ingredients are fairly standard ingredients, so the challenge will be to get the flavour and the flair out of those. Here are the rules. You can choose to use all or just a few of the ingredients that you find in that mystery box. You'll have 45 minutes to cook us a dish that's going to knock our socks off. What you don't want to do is make one of the 10 least impressive dishes today. Do that and you'll be in an elimination challenge and it could be game over right at the start. By the end of today, five of you will be going home. Going home on the first day, it, it would hurt. It, uh, you'd be going home with your tail between your legs. Uh, you know your mates are gonna give it to you. I want to learn, I want to cook, and I want to be with the best, so not going to heaven today, no way. You've come to this island to either sink or swim. Your first ever challenge starts now. As we run for the mystery box, it's like a herd of wild animals. It's mayhem. I went as fast as I can because I know that the quicker you get the ingredients, you know, the more cooking time you've got. I've decided to cook buttered peas with a stuffed tomato with some crispy bacon on top just for some extra crunch and texture. I'm Alana Lowe's and I'm a freelance journalist from Brisbane. My goal is to become one of the country's best food writers. I played Aussie Rules for four years and during that time I was selected in the Australian side all those four years running. I'm extremely competitive and can't wait to get out there and start competing against everybody else. Hopefully it all comes together at the end of the 45 minutes, so hopefully I'm timing it right. Today I'm making a mushroom garlic uh, ravioli in a tomato consomme. The conditions outside are terrible for cooking. My bench is hot, I'm hot, but I decided to still run with making my own pasta because I know th there won't be a third time. 
In the first series of MasterChef, I made it to the top 50. So, this is your first big challenge. 50 of us were given a chopping board and a knife. I was unfortunately picked in the bottom 12 of that 50, and half of us went home. You had a tough, tough day. When I got knocked out, I was devastated. So, you know, to come back now, I don't want to limp through to the top 24. I want to charge through to the top 24. Well, here we go again. This is the biggest mystery box challenge we've ever had. You know, this is the first challenge. This is the one where you've got to shine and you need a good start. I'm making a meatballs with potato mash and uh, tomato sauce and a pea puree. Hopefully my dish stands out. My name's Alex Glasson. I'm a machinist from Perth. My heart's not in this job anymore. I use food as, as a bit of an escape. I get home from work and the first thing I want to do is cook. I want to be in a career that I'm passionate about. Beautiful, look at that. If I could spend the rest of my life cooking, I would die a very happy man. I just want to, you know, start doing what I do best. Cooking. <laughs> Danielle, how are you going? I'm going great. Are you working away at our am. top 50. <laughs> what are you cooking? I'm cooking some meatballs. I'm making uh, sort of Spanish tapas style meatballs. Today I'm going to be cooking a meatball tajin. Meatballs? I mean, There's a few meatballs along this line. Yeah, I've heard. Are yours going to stand out? I hope so. Rachel, what's your dish? A little beef bites. I called my dish beef bites because I thought I don't want to make what everybody else is making. So I just, well I was really, so I just called it a different name. My name's Rachel McSweeney, I'm an office administrator from Perth. As a mother of three teenage children I'm kept very busy, cleaning mountains of ironing, driving them from one end of the world to the other. I now feel that it's time for me to see how far I can go with one of my dreams. Yep. How are you feeling now you're standing shoulder to shoulder against 49 other amateur cooks? Pretty confident, I think I can do it. Hey, it's a beautiful day on Cockatoo Island and there's nothing harder than cooking outside. I can see lots of meatballs, a few shepherd's pies, just make sure that they taste brilliant. You have 30 minutes to go. doing a potato galette with um, minted peas. As I'm going through this challenge, all I can think of is seriously, I never thought it was going to be this hard. Just trying to get it all done in what feels like the most excruciatingly short amount of time. Stressing out a little bit. The first thing that's going wrong with my dish is the potatoes. They're taking a lot longer than I thought. And I'm messing up the one thing that I think I'm good at, which is time management. Oh, come on, up. I need to get my act together and stay on track, or I'm going to be in that bottom ten. Come on, come on, come on. Coming up, the pressure mounts as contestants race to the finish line. It's time to hustle, hustle. And later, the bottom ten face their greatest nightmare, Adriano Zumbo. You're one scary dude. First day of Top 50, we have 45 minutes to create a dish using fairly standard ingredients. Today I'm doing a flatbread kofta with tomato and mint salsa and a garlic cream. I'm feeling really excited about this challenge because I think it, it's a real opportunity to show the way we think and be able to put ourselves on the plate. Albie, G'day. what's your dish? I'm doing a shepherd's pie. It's uh, just a simple dish, yeah, meat and potatoes type of thing with a few veggies in between. I'm cooking a pea broth with tomatoes, uh, bacon and serving with some onion rings. I'm making a minestrone soup with a orichetti pasta and a mint gremolata. I hope, I hope I get there. I think the trick to today's challenge is generating flavour. There's no spices, there's no herbs, there's basic elements, and you've got to try and put as much punch into it as you can. Here 
This is what cooking under pressure is all about. Less than 15 minutes to go. It's time to hustle, hustle. My strategy for this challenge is to keep it simple and do what I know. Hey, Sarah. Hey. How are you going? Good. How are you? Good. What's the dish? Tater galette, which is served with peas and lettuce. Is this dish good enough to impress us, do you reckon? Um, look, it's very simple. It's something I cook for my family at home. Who's your family? Two boys, three girls, ranging from 21 to 3. Wow. Hey. I'm Sarah Arnold. I'm a marketing manager from Queensland. I have five <laughs> beautiful children. They mean the world to me. Some people might say that 45 is too late to follow your dream, <laughs> but this is my opportunity to change my life. under the pump at the moment. Probably a couple of minutes behind with, with not long to go. Jay, you struggling there a little bit? Um, a little bit. I probably bit. might have bitten off a bit more than I can chew. What, what are you cooking, mate? I'm um, cooking a garlic mushroom filled ravioli with a um, tomato consomme. Is it going to be beautiful? Is it going to taste good? Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to be uh, fantastic. If there's any advice we can give you, I think you need to move your butt, man, because you're yeah. not going to get done in time. Thanks, guys. The thing I'm most worried about in this dish is um, getting everything together. It's all about the timing, and I'm kind of running out. Hayden, now you're a lifesaver. Is this dish going to save your life, keep you away from elimination? Hopefully you'll like it. We'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed, eh? Can a great dish change your life? On MasterChef, you bet it can. Guys, you've got five minutes to go. Not long at all. <laughs> a lot of things will go wrong. I haven't got my meatballs on yet, and I've only got a few minutes, so I'm a little bit worried. I'm really, really freaking out now because the potatoes aren't cooked, the meatballs aren't cooked, the pea puree is not done, the tomato sauce hasn't reduced enough. I just have to get these in. There's so much left to do, and this is the first day of the competition. I want to show everyone that I can cook, and I have a right to be here. It's time to make your cooking good looking. It's time to plate up your dish right now. You have 60 seconds to go. I'm just flat out. I'm just flat out. All of a sudden, I'm realising I've just run out of time. I'm trying to show some skills to the judges, I decide to whip up a bit of a mayonnaise. Kind of thinking also I could get away with an oily, minty pea kind of a side dish, but before I know it, I am plating a dish of oil and butter. And I am just sinking on the inside. Let's hope this is the first of many countdowns. You have 10 seconds. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it, guys. Your time's up. First challenge, done and dusted. Well done, guys. <laughs> After the time's up and we've all plated up our dishes, I step back from the, from the bench and I'm absolutely devastated with what I've put forth. That's not me. That's probably going to send me home. You've just completed the first Mystery Box Challenge of 2011. You had to turn some of Australia's most popular supermarket food items into a stunning dish. We're going to taste your dishes and we're looking for the top ones. Knowing that the judge is going to taste my food today is the most nerve-wracking thing I've ever done except get married. But on the downside, we're also looking for the 10 dishes that least impress. If one of those dishes is yours, then you'll be going into an elimination challenge and from there, five of you will be going home. just completed the first Mystery Box Challenge of 2011. When you hear your name, please bring your dish to the tasting table. 
If I was to go home on day one of top 50, it would be incredibly disappointing. First up, Alana. I'm so nervous. I'm concerned that it's very simple. I can only hope that the judges like it. What's a dish? It's buttered peas with mint and a stuffed tomato with mushroom and onion and some crispy bacon on top. Well, I can't wait to taste. Firstly, presentation. It looks spectacular. And on top of that, it backs up with great flavour. That's a cracker dish. A little bit there. All three judges are standing in front of me, gobbling up my dish. It's the most incredible feeling to see them enjoying the food that I've put in front of them. George used about 200 words. I'll use one. Very good. Not only does it look gorgeous, but it tastes just really clean, very fresh, everything that it should. I've got to give you a high five. <laughs> well done. <laughs> That's fantastic. Sarah? You're up next. I'm feeling really good. That's my dish. I've plated it up. I know the flavours are good. It's not a tricky dish at all. It's a simple dish. I think the... The letdown of what you've given us is, is these peas. They just, they feel like they've just been tipped out of the bag and, you know, mixed with some lettuce and mint. Not a bad effort, not a great effort, an okay effort. And sometimes okay can land you in that bottom 10. The thought of being bottom 10 is gutting at this early stage. It's absolutely gutting. Jay, welcome back. What's the dish? Mushroom and garlic ravioli in a tomato consomme. Two-thirds there, because that tomato broth at the bottom is clear, it's vibrant, and the mushrooms, that's delicious. But your pasta is terrible. <laughs> Just terrible. The onions got me in the first series. Let's hope the pasta's not the downfall this year. Let's hope it's enough just to scrape through so I can keep going. You should have nailed those elements beautifully. That's what you've got to do in this competition. Sure. If you don't, it'll be a short one. It's things like peeling the tomatoes, you know? Just those little touches that, that take the dish up from being good to extraordinary. I think you know that this isn't your best effort. At the end of the day, food doesn't lie, you know? It is what it is on a plate. Peter, you're up next. I'm fearful that my skills are really not MasterChef skills and that the, I could be over very, very quickly because I've just made a bowl of soup. That's a, a really top dish. A top dish. Uh, I love the I love the pasta in there because it adds this sort of really cool texture. That's a cracker. Keep cooking like that, and you're going to go a long way. Thank possibly you. the top 24. Next up to the tasting bench is Rachel. Tell us what you cooked. Uh, I've cooked minted potatoes with beef bites and uh, mushroom velouté. All right, let's give it a try. Ooh. I like the idea behind it. I like the presentation. I think where you've let yourself down is things like meatballs. They've got to be in a sauce or they need something wetter, moist. It's just, I don't know, it's dry. Let's be honest. I knew that my beef bites were too dry. It doesn't cut it for MasterChef. Hopefully, it's, it's good enough just to get me over the line. That's the way meatballs should be served. 
It's a real beautiful, beautiful food. I love it. I think it's a really good, big flavoured, honest dish. It's really fresh, it's really light. I'm really pleased you put up such a simple, fresh and textural dish. Wow. The tasting went amazingly and I've gone from feeling nervous and, and freaking out to just being so happy. So, how are you going? Good, thanks, George. Nervous? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm human. What have you cooked? Uh, I've done a potato galette with minted lemony peas under oil with a mustard mayonnaise. I'm watching George take a mouthful of my dish and I'm just cringing. I can just see oil dripping off his fork and all I can think to myself is, I'm so sorry. Your palate is looking for some zip and zing just to cut through all of that richness, not a cracker dish. Um, and I'm sure it's not your best cooking. Mm. Kate, please bring forward your dish. I'm happy with what I've produced because I know I like to eat it, but I'm also feeling really nervous because I'm just not 100% sure if what I've done is, is enough to impress them. I have cooked a flatbread kofta with a tomato and mint salsa. Can you cut a little bit off? Yeah, give us a little as well. Just cut a nice little triangle. That is an absolute crack up. I'd sit down for dinner happily every single night and eat one of those. That is beautiful. The interesting chefs are master chef are the ones that look at the boring ingredients and bring us something that excites us. So thank you very much indeed because you've got us excited. You've made us exhilarated to be back on season three of Master Chef. I feel a little bit weak at the knees and think just keep standing up. Can't get the smile off my face. Thank you. Well done. Fantastic Thanks. job. Good stuff. Next up is Alex. Next up is Alex. I'm feeling very, very nervous about what they're going to say and I'm just worried that this is going to put me in the bottom ten. Alex. Gary. Tell us what went wrong. I think the, uh, the stress of the competition got to me today. The timing was off. You know what we loved in auditions? You cooked a mushroom risotto. It was brilliant. I think it's the first time I've ever tasted a risotto on audition. It's good enough to put somebody through the top 50. It's normally the death dish in MasterChef. You perfected it. Are you a one-trick pony? No. You only cook risotto? Not at all. Not at all. But you haven't really impressed us, have you? You've given us a couple of meatballs on some mash. I don't think they're cooked either. Let's find out. So I can't taste that, you know that. It's raw. It's the first day of the top 50 and the judges won't even try my food and that's just devastating. You had a bad day in the kitchen. Don't ever cook like that again. Promise us that. Promise right, you that, right. that is that's two-year-old stuff. Yep. tasted your dishes in the first mystery box challenge you've faced and we've decided on the four the best we've also decided on the ten worst dishes if I call your name please step forward Alana My name's called up first. What's going on? I thought, I thought I'd done enough. Kate. Peter. And Michael Weldon. Congratulations, the four of you cooked the best dishes we saw today. Well done. The results really boosted my confidence. I feel 
like I'm meant to be here, like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. What a great start to this competition. And it just shows you what can be achieved with such simple, beautiful ingredients. Well done. Thank you very much. There is a downside to today's competition. We had our eye out for the 10 least impressive dishes, and we found them. If I call your name, please step forward. Alex. Tony. Nathan. Son. The last thing I want to do at this point in time is go home. I just want to start to really prove that I can do this and that I deserve to be here. Greg. Die. Michael. Andrew. Rachel. I'm getting flashbacks of the first series. This was my exit point. And just that pressure of waiting for that 10th name and just hoping it wasn't mine. Sarah. So the relief when that 10th name's called is like I've just had that giant mystery box taken off my shoulders. Devastating to be considered to be one of the least, most impressive when it's out of 50. You 10 produced the least impressive dishes today. The bad news is you're going to face an elimination challenge. And from there, Five of you will be going home. I'm in the bottom ten, and I'm going to fight. I'm going to push hard. I'm going to use all my mental energy and physical energy to make sure I don't get in the bottom five. Haven't had a fantastic start. All I want to do now is just prove to the judges that I really do belong in the top 24. So we're walking into just huge, massive, beautiful industrial area. And we can see these 10 beautiful, shiny MasterChef benches. And I actually can't wait to start the challenge. Welcome to Turbine Hall. This is your second chance and a chance to rebuild your MasterChef dream. Remember, it's not how you start this competition, it's how you finish. Sarah, it's pretty obvious you've got a lucky charm there. What's that? That's my Taswegian Portuguese lucky cock. It is a Portuguese symbol for good luck in the kitchen. It became my uh, lucky charm during the MasterChef auditions. It was very successful. A delicious dish and I love your style. We told you that this was going to be the toughest season of MasterChef yet. To decide your fate, I invited along a special guest. It's going to be someone you all know, but I rather fear it's going to be someone that you don't want to see. Let me give you some clues. The V8 cake. The macaroon tower. And the one word that strikes fear into every MasterChef contestant. The Crockenbush. Adriana Zumbo. Oh my God! Give me a break. Here he is, patissiere extraordinaire, Adriano Zumbo. We turn around 
And behind Adrian Masubu are these two guys and they're carrying this massive cloche, just the biggest metal dish you've ever seen in your life. And we're thinking, what is under there? Hey, Adriano Zumbo, welcome back to MasterChef. Thanks, George. It's great to be back to MasterChef. Series three, day one. Gives me the opportunity to throw a spanner in the works and set a really tough challenge. One thing that could be worse than a V8 cake, macaroon tower and crock and bush could be some sort of scary, hideous Frankenstein of all three. Are you guys ready to see this? Are you guys ready to see this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah? So what I've bought for you today is one of my favourite ingredients. Oh, yum. So if you haven't guessed, it's chocolate. Chocolate is probably every amateur cook's worst nightmare. Things can go wrong. It melts, it splits, it cools, it's lumpy. It does pretty much everything bad. And so working with it as an ingredient is really, really scary stuff. Guys, question, who loves chocolate? Rachel, is this the perfect challenge for you? Very much so. I love chocolate. Um, I am so relieved. So today's elimination challenge is all about you 10 showing us what you can do with that beautiful ingredient, chocolate. Adriana, what are you hoping to see or not hoping to see? Well, what I'm not hoping to see is your grandma's favourite chocolate cake or chocolate fondant or chocolate mousse in a cup. Or if you do do that, it has to be the most amazing bang on rendition of that dessert that you've ever done. The rules are really simple. You'll have 90 minutes to create a dessert that is going to wow Adriano and the three of us. To do that, you'll need some extra ingredients. So Matt snaps his fingers and this beautiful pantry appears almost out of nowhere behind him. And you should have seen us, we were like kids in a candy store. It's the perfect Patissier's pantry. You've got everything that you might need for a great dessert and even more. When you've made your dishes, we'll taste them and we'll decide which five of you stay, which five of you will go home. My heart is going insane. The adrenaline is... I've never done skydiving, but I'm assuming that's what it felt like because I am about to jump out of a plane and I am completely unsure if I've got a parachute. Well, time to lose those stun looks. You've got 90 minutes and your time starts now. When the time starts, I get as much as I can as quickly as possible. As I'm running back towards my workstation, I'm extremely excited. This is going to be a good challenge. I'm able to redeem myself. Fine. My heart went out for her when she fell because that would have really shattered her confidence and you don't need that just before you're about to start a 90-minute sort of cook-off. How you doing? You all right? No stress. Come on. So much for the lucky cock. <laughs> and I've got this broken lucky charm. What more today could possibly go wrong? Accidents happen. It's not a biggie. Okay. So you just need to refocus now. Yep. Forget that happened and yep. push on, okay? Okay, okay. This is what this is all about. Yep. You can do it. <laughs> chop, chop. Let's go, darling. Thank you. Feeling quite a bit under pressure. I'm going to make a croissant pudding. I'm making chocolate brownies with um, berry ice cream and a berry coulis. I'm going to make a lime and white chocolate panna cotta. I'm going to try and do a three-tier mousse. Don't cook with chocolate a lot, so see how I go. Alex, George. an absolute disastrous oh, morning. Disaster is an understatement, mate. 
What are you going to do to turn it around? I'm making a uh, chocolate and pear brulee. And if I have time, I'm going to put up a white chocolate cheesecake. So two dishes? Maybe, if I have time. Let's hope these brulees work out. Okay. And I'll be questioning that second dessert. I would be totally. OK, OK. Thank you. Master Chef is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. But we're hoping for brilliant desserts. You've got one hour to go. Sarah, how are you going? I'm going OK. I've recovered from my fall. We come prepared. Thank We're going to fix it for you, all right? OK, thanks. Just little dots, George, little dots. Never put too much glue on. That was lovely. That was really lovely. I mean, it made me feel happy that they cared about this lucky charm. What are you, uh, what are you cooking? I'm doing a raspberry swirl white chocolate ice cream. Yeah. I'm doing Grenache pudding. Yep. Perhaps a tempered cream anglaise to go with it as well. Gee, there's a lot going on, yeah, isn't there? Yeah, so Earlier the today, risk. I mean, I could see in your face you were quite upset. Yeah, oh, yeah I took it pretty hard. What place are you in right now? I feel, I've got my mojo back. Okay. Exactly. Look, I hope it all comes together as so. much as that is staying fast. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Good, so, good luck. Thank you. It's very important to me to deliver an amazing dessert because I'm not going home. I don't want to go home. Rachel? Yes, Gary. How are you going? Very well, thank you. Now, you, uh, you just confidently put your hand up and said, uh, love cooking with chocolate. I do, yes. Straight away, I thought of this recipe. Um, I've been making it for years. I absolutely love it. It looks like a brownie. That's what it looks like. Funnily enough, it is a brownie, Ooh. and I know brownies can be very boring. So, Adriano said that he doesn't want to see those boring old desserts. So, oh, what's going to be well, special well. about it? I'm making it, Gary. Yes. Good All right. luck. That'll be a good brownie. Okay. First elimination for 2011, and we've brought in the big guns. We've brought Adriano in. Rachel up the front, she's making chocolate brownie, and you warned them, you didn't want to see boring stuff. I mean, I was looking to see something a bit more creative, but so wait, I have to wait and see. Alex, he can go from zero to hero. He's had a terrible start to the day, but now he's making a, quite a nice dish. Has he got enough time to pull it off? That's the question. Oh, it's, it's a big task, yeah. Hopefully he's taken all of our advice and he's going to put up one beautiful dish. I hope so. Are you heading towards sweet success or a bitter end? That's the question. You're halfway through this challenge. 45 minutes to go. Come on! The dish I'm making today is a lavender and lemon creme brulee with a chocolate ice cream. Ice cream's something that I've only come to relatively recently, um, so that's the big element of winging it in my dish, which is unfortunate because that, of course, is the chocolate element. I feel like I'm taking the biggest risk of all, because chocolate ice cream is not only something I don't eat, but it's something I've never actually made before. Ahead on MasterChef Australia. Come on, guys! It's crunch time in the kitchen. I'm beyond stressed about my ice cream at the moment. Which five contestants will melt under pressure? This is this good enough to impress you? Cross your fingers. The challenge we've been set today by Adriana Zumbo is to cook a chocolate dish, but it's got to be a beautiful dish that's going to set his senses on fire. And the five least impressive dishes are going to send people home. Andrew? Yes? I think you're the sweatiest bloke oh, on the line. Mate, oh, oh, mate. Oh, mate. And what are you cooking? You've got a chocolate pudding over here. Chocolate pudding there that has blueberries in a croissant Bread and butter pudding. Okay, sounds good. I've also got a white chocolate, almond and hazelnut meal cigar in the oven as yeah. well. It's making me hungry. It's good. It smells good. Are you uh, confident that you're going to survive the challenge? I and feel I will. I'm oh, hoping I will. Do you really want to be here? Yes, so much. I want to chase my dreams. I'm 37. It's time I grow up and actually start following them and actually start believing myself. My name's Andrew and I'm a youth worker in Port Lincoln. <laughs> 
My dream is to open a restaurant that trains and supports disadvantaged kids. No matter how far I go, I'm never going to give up on that dream. Good on you, man. Good sentiment. Thank you. Kick butt. Nice. This is your last chance to save your MasterChef dream, or is this going to slip away like melting chocolate? You've got less than 30 minutes to go. Come on, guys. Uh, I still haven't got the puddings in the oven yet. I'm thinking, gosh, they've got to be insane. I'm getting my Grenache puddings together. May have time to do the cream on glaze. I'll have to see how I go. Di, how are you going? Okay. Hi, George. Hi, Gary. What are you making? Um, I'm just making a rose water shoe pastry with um, white chocolate creme patissier and just a little rose water granny on top to freshen it up okay, a little bit. Some nice clean flavours. I like that. Shoe pastry. Adriana, Adriana makes it every day. Yes. <laughs> you really want to be here? I really, really want to be here. Hi, I'm Di Do and I'm a radio broadcaster from Adelaide. My family runs a national Vietnamese community radio station. It's called Ding Doi, meaning the language of my country. I love food. It's it's everything. It's family, it's friends, it's it's travelling, it's everything that I love and I really want to make it part of my life. All right, fingers crossed for the shoot pastry. Twenty minutes to go. My dish is plated up. It's looking great to me, and I'm feeling really calm, really confident. Andrew, how are you going? Good. You think you've done enough for the time limit? I really hope so. Yeah. I really hope so. After what I did earlier today, I really hope I've stepped up and given something that is worthy. All the best. No, thanks. I'm suddenly very concerned that I haven't done enough. This is my chance. Oh, this is my only chance. I've got to turn on my ice cream maker. Hang on, where's the custard? It's in the ice cream maker. Some of the other contestants start yelling out to me, where's your ice cream, is it in the freezer? And I realise I haven't turned on the ice cream machine. The only emotion that I can feel is just rank fear. I'm beyond stressed about my ice cream at the moment. There's a massive chance that it's not going to be ready in time. So, uh... I might have to pitch it as a custard. <laughs> There's going to be something on the plate. I've just got to hope it's enough. I love this challenge. I think it's fantastic. I think Adriana really set them to task. Chocolate, brilliant thing to work with. We've got panna cottas, creme brulees, things that need setting. Ice cream, for goodness sake. They're really testing themselves. Question is, have they got their aspirations confused with their capabilities? 15 minutes to go, and it's time to boom, boom, shake the room. It looks pretty gooey to me, and I'm happy with that. Here you go, Rachel, how are you? <laughs> oh, a bit daunted now. You're standing next to yeah. me. Oh, I love a chef. Um, what I'm... are we making? Oh, the brownies. Oh, brownies. Yeah. A good one, is it? Uh, probably not as good as yours, Adrian, but I think it's pretty good. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I would be standing next to Adriana Zumbo. <laughs> Can't wait to taste it. I really hope you like it, because I'm not quite ready to go home. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you very much. I can see a little panic on everybody's faces, and that's because chocolate isn't easy. You've got five minutes to go. Time's running out. My shoe pastry's not really working out. The shoe pastry looks just gluggy and gooey inside. I'm feeling devastated. I don't have the base for my dish, and I've got to think of an alternative. So I grab some puff pastry. So let's see what happens. I think I was a bit overzealous in trying to do two dishes today. So I decided just to go with the one and get the brulee spot on. I feel as though I'm back in the competition now because I'm in my zone, I'm in control, I'm focused, and I just hope that my mistakes from the earlier challenge today would be forgotten once the judges taste my brulee. If you're going to panic, it's now. You've got one minute to go. Let's go, guys. Let's go, guys. 
I'm not sure we've got anything to put on the plate yet. I'm quite concerned. I gave my chocolate Grenache pudding a bit of a wobble. And I thought, oh no, they're not looking good. Here we go. Oh no. My chocolate pudding hasn't set. I knew it. What was I thinking? You have 10 seconds. Two, one, that's it, your time's up. I started off on a bad foot this morning and I've got this dessert and now I have to present it to the judges. It's just like, oh my God. You've just created a chocolate dish to save your MasterChef bacon. If it's good enough, you'll stay in the competition. If not, sadly, it's all over. When you hear your name, please bring your dish to the tasting table. First up is Andrew. To fight on this MasterChef challenge means the absolute world for me. This is something I need. This is something I want to do. I do not want to go home. I want to beat these nine other people. Andrew, you think you've done enough to stay in the top 50? I think so, yes. I'm hoping that early finish isn't a curse to me, though. What you've really given us is two desserts, and they're both fantastic. You're one scary dude. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw that on the plate when I came to your, your bench earlier, I thought it was a weapon. I thought, you know... <laughs> I thought you could knock someone out with that, and um, but it, it, it's awesome. It's a great texture. It goes with the pudding. It all complements each other. So really, well done. Wow. I love the fact you've done everything we asked you. We asked for a chocolate dessert, and this dessert is all about chocolate. Thank you. Thank you for reaffirming the faith that we have in you as a top 50, that you can cook dishes like this. I'm feeling extremely humble right now and extremely deeply moved. Definitely makes me feel that I belong here, that I belong in this competition. Di, please bring your dish forward for tasting. Di, what have you created? <laughs> a comedy of errors. It's um, puff pastry with cream patisserie and a rose water grenade. Right, did you make the pastry? Uh, no, that, that's um, bought pastry. The Rosewater Granita is the winner. The rest, unfortunately, is, a is, a, is, is a disaster, let's be honest. So good effort, you know, thanks for trying, uh, but lots more practice required. Next up is Greg. Tastes great, that's what I eat when I sit on the lounge, I guess custard. You pulled out all the stops, it's tasty. Michael, what it tastes like is, uh, sort of wishy-washy chocolate cream. And it just goes to show you have to learn your basics. I kind of like how it looks, but um, I know that the brioche is burnt. Nathan, the question is, will that burnt toast in your home? Tony. This is two rounds in a row where you've given us nothing. 
Next up to the bench is Sun. All I can think is, please let the flavour be good. And dear God, please don't let that custard send me home. Tell us what you cooked. I did a uh, lemon lavender brulee with a chocolate custard and a raspberry coolie. What was it supposed to be? Yeah, it meant to be a chocolate ice cream. Are you pleased? Yes, I'm really anxious. Um, I just... Everything is on that plate at the moment. Everything. What's everything? Oh, I've... never felt this alive, I don't think. Ever. So it could just go. Just taste. The brulee itself is really tasty. It's nice and sweet. The, the problem is this is a chocolate challenge. Mm. So the question is, is whether or not we can forgive you uh, for an ice cream that isn't and a chocolate sauce that shouldn't be. In a chocolate challenge. In a, in a chocolate challenge. Alex, please bring your dessert forward. If the judges like my brulee, then it means that I've saved my ass and I'm still in this competition. Alex, how would you compare this morning's challenge to this one? Night and day. I was stressed out. I lost track of time. Can you win MasterChef? I can. If you won it, what would you do with it? I'd love to be a chef. To anything to get me away from the life that I had. I thought it was quite fitting that I walked past the machine shop in here because that was the old me, this is the new me. Not much more to say, mate. Let's uh, see if your dish does all the talking. None of us want to taste your dish. Now we all do. Well done. That is a great dessert. It's rich. It's got that crunchy top. It's awesome. Is it awesome? Did you just say... <laughs> did you just say awesome? Yeah, I said awesome. Because I'm with Andrew and I'm feeling young. Awesome, yeah. dude. <laughs> There's just one more thing I'd like to do. Uh, I'd like to shake your hand. This, this guy's like a, a god in the pastry world and he's shaking my hand. And then he fainted. <laughs> That was, that was incredible. Sarah, time to show us your dish. Sarah, what's the dish? There's a chocolate Grenache pudding puddle, um, and there's a cream anglaise and some raspberry coulis there. It's obviously a failure. Um, the pudding didn't stay in the oven long enough, so it didn't set. What can I say? You know, we have bad days in the kitchen. There's no doubt about it. Um, but it's about how you pick yourself back up, OK? Good flavours, but just not right. My gut feeling is that I'm not going to stay. However, not everyone has perfect dishes. You just never know. Rachel, front and centre, bring your dish. Rachel, you were supremely confident that your brownie was going to win the day. I don't know if it'll win the day, but I think it might get me out of this elimination challenge. Well, let's find out. This coolie that's around the outside is it's a bit thick. You've overcooked the sugar. The brownie itself is good. It's nice. With such a simple thing, I think you could have been a little bit more clever with how you presented it. And not letting the five-year-old out on the decoration. But then it's up to these guys as well. Cross your fingers. Is this brownie good enough to impress me? 
No wonder. Is this brandy good enough to impress me? I wonder. Adrian Azumbo likes the brownie. <laughs> Adriano Zumbo likes the brownies. What a compliment. Rachel, thank you. You can go back to your bench. This is the first elimination of 2011. In a few short minutes, five of you will be going home. If I call your name, please step forward. Andrew. And Alex. Boys, it was a bad idea to get yourself into an elimination on the first day. But you cook well this afternoon, so congratulations, you're safe. This feels like a weight has been lifted. Earlier today is a distant memory. I'm back in this competition. How are you feeling, Andrew? Great. Amazing. Um, extremely humbled and extremely overwhelmed. Please join the others. Well done. Rachel, step forward. Mixed response on the brownie. Some bits we liked, some bits we didn't. Do you think you deserve to go through to the next round? I very much want to. Was the brownie good enough to go through? Adrian Zumba liked it. I guess it depends if you all liked it. Rachel, we liked it. <laughs> Congratulations, you're through, you're safe, you live another day. I've never been so relieved in my life. I was incredibly relieved. There are seven of you standing in front of us, but there are only two spots left. I'm feeling really nervous because I still think I have a chance, but I also know that some other people have made really, really good dishes today. Greg. Sun. Step forward. I'm standing there thinking, uh, am I through? Am I not? Was the brulee good enough? I'm afraid to say that you won't be going home just yet. Congratulations. I'm just so super happy to, to still be here. Soon, my darling. Are you happy? I think I might need a bit of a heart check, but um, I'm really happy and just so, so thankful. I'm just so relieved I made it through. And I can't wait to get back out there and show them that I actually can cook. Michael, Tony, Sarah, Di, Nathan, you've come here with so much gut, so much emotion, and this love and desire to cook food. Continue your love for food and make something of it. Di, you're gonna keep on cooking? Definitely. Can I just say, I've had the best day and I've learned so much and I can't wait to use what I've learned today. To the five of you, it's been great having you on MasterChef, but unfortunately, it's time to say goodbye. Just because my MasterChef journey has been cut short, I don't think it's going to stop my dreams and I'm certainly going to continue with those. And then there were 45. You survived the first day. 
This is a rite of passage. You have to earn the right to cook in this kitchen and earn it you will. Are you ready for it? I am completely and utterly 100% committed to taking out the MasterChef title. I'll stop at nothing. <laughs> Tomorrow night on MasterChef Australia, Matt Moran Bootcamp. Do you understand? It's back to basics as the remaining hopefuls battle the elements in a series of do or die challenges. That just doesn't cut the mustard, buddy. These amateurs must earn their stripes. No. I can't put you through. I love it. Woo! Because at the end of the day, five more will go home. The question I want to know is, can a lifeguard make a scone? I think so, yes. And hopefully this is proof in the scone. <laughs>